last week when we left our pets. <laughs> Nathan Keene had been beaten almost senseless by a coconut and was wandering aimlessly through the jungle, his memory lost. When suddenly he runs into Dr. Mary Morgan, writer of the trick. Oh, Seamus, oh, Seamus, what have you done? Okay, you've crashed a plane. You've taken psychotropic drugs. <laughs> you've tried to amass an army of fictional little people. And then you've tried to turn the entire, the entire group of people on the plane against each other. This is not, this is not good. Okay, you've got to get everyone off the island. No, we can't. No pilot has ever survived a commercial airline crash. I'd like to think it would probably be blamed on me. What am I gonna do? As he paced back and forth, plotting and planning, <laughs> personal attorney Jeff Stein came by and listened, waited for a moment before he broke in <laughs> to his conversation with himself. Okay. Well then, there, there was an Arab fellow on the plane, and well, to, to start, no one likes Arabs, and they hate Arabs on planes. So I'll blame it on the Arab. I'll just say that he came up and was like, Hey, I'm a special needs Arab. Can I get some wings and see how you fly the plane? And I was like, oh, I love Arabs and retards. And come on and see how I fly the plane. And then he crashed the plane. That's how I'm going to blame it on the Arab. That's what I'm going to do. That's right. Blame it on the brown guy. Oh, oh my ankle. I, <laughs> I don't trust these brown skies. Uh, there you are, you son of a bitch. What? You think I don't remember? I saw you drag that poor woman into the water earlier. I was, I, I was trying 
to save her. Save her? She went in to go get the beacon for the goddamn rescue! She doesn't know how to swim now! I went under there, and we were like in this slow-mo water capades thing. Where is she? Is she out? She didn't make it out. <laughs> Son of a bitch! I'm sorry, I just... Wait, you're gonna blame violence on me and then you're gonna go striking another man? Look, There's I... something we do in Ireland when a man hits us. Ah! Look, I said I'm sorry, okay? It's not like me, I just... These last three days, I haven't been able to get a grip on things. I need my briefcase. I've been looking for my briefcase, a brown briefcase. Did you see it? No, I haven't seen a briefcase at all. Except for that brown briefcase full of drugs I found. <laughs> It's a brown briefcase. It's got some important papers in it. Nope, I haven't seen that at all. There were a few important papers in it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else unusual about it. It's, it's got a lock. I'm I mean, sorry. I haven't seen it, but maybe we could take a look for it together. All right, great. Sure. Follow me this way. Beach, Eleonora Mayflower, girls' school matron, is about to meet the Arab. <laughs> Carlo was addressing a group of coconuts as if they were giving her an award. <laughs> Little did she know that Logan Bandit Greenwood would enter with something he had found on the island, something shocking.
what you're, uh, what you're doing there, eh? You know, you're uh, dancing to some uh, coconuts and some water. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Say, I found this to keep us warm. Oh, then. Some huge white bear was running around, so I killed it and took its fur. <laughs> You're so masculine. Yeah. You're so tall. I'm a, I'm a lumberjack. <laughs> Tell me, since we're here, what was your favorite television show? You know, I never watched a lot of TV. I, I spent all my time outside. Why? I, Why did you do that? Oh, well, you know, outside's got all sorts of nice stuff. Birds. I like birds. There's a sky outside. Clean air. Well, look, if we're outside now, we've been outside for three days! Oh, I know. Isn't it great? Oh, man. I'm loving this. I'm living. Oh, so many trees. You know, I discovered that there are more species of trees on this island than there are back in British Columbia. No, I'm from North Dakota. I moved up to British Columbia to become a lumberjack. Canadians are funny, aren't they? They're funny people, those Canadians. I don't really hang around the Canadians too much. They, uh, they smell like cheese. So I stay away from them. I tend to. I've got one good Canadian friend. His name is Jack. Good guy. Jack the Canadian. No, his name is, is Jack Tree Green. <laughs> Not the Canadian. That's a dumb name. Logan, since we're here on this sandy beach with a pelt, um, it's a white bear pelt. Well, never seen a white bear. It's like an albino bear or something. Sometimes I can be a white bear. <laughs> I crack myself up. <laughs> She was like a white bear, but before she could make her move and turn him into her prey, they heard a horrible sound. Oh, they're adorable. No, no, 
cigarette in his butt, then you would well, be eating I had your it. cigarette. Well, and no, it but my breath. hands killed it. My cigarette just temporarily blinded it in his left eye. All right, now hold on one moment. You're telling me that you killed You know, I bet if we could speak Arabic, we'd hear some pretty interesting things coming from the other side of the bench. I do not mean that they are in peace. Allah, ma, Allah, I do not. Yo, but this watch is nicer. All right. <laughs> Remember what I said. Remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> jumped into the ocean. Eventually they will 
come for this airline because they need some of the personal belongings that were on it. Oh, look, a doctor coming. Oh, it's okay. Here, I can move. Oh. I don't like bending down and picking things up. Uh, for someone, someone might pick it up. <laughs> anyway, listen. You, of course they'll come for you. You're the richest man in the world. And for me, too. Otherwise, otherwise I'll end up like my wife and daughter. Just wreckage. Wreckage in a plane crash and nobody cares. Yeah. yeah. I was going back to Ireland. The crash was a year ago. I lost my wife and daughter. They were flying there. Also taking a shortcut across the Antarctic. <laughs> this does not make sense to me, Steve. <laughs> What I say. It's a horrible coincidence. Shut up! <laughs> Tiffany? Sweetheart, it's okay. Daddy will come. No. Joanne! It's okay. Daddy will come. Shut up! Don't you hear that? I don't hear that. Just don't cry. Don't cry, honey. Yeah, here's your car back. <laughs> Showing Eleanor Mayflower how to construct a small shelter out of a polar bear pelt. And the captain horns in on his action. Okay, now hold this for me, okay? Now look, I went and collected all these twigs. We're just gonna use these like Legos. It's real easy. I've had to do this in the British Columbian wilderness a thousand times, okay? I trust your skills with wood completely. As you should, my wood is mighty. Okay. Now, Here we go. What's that?
comforts Greta and Carlo as they wonder the fate of Naismith Key. Smith Keen underwater. No. What have the monkey seals done to him? Guy on the plane! No! From Naismith's Keen point of view, the monkey seals were cruel, but each one looked more and more like one of his fellow survivors as they pushed him around underwater, his helpless body being belted and beaten. They looked like the people on the island but were in fact hideous monkey seals. Happens next week on Lost Away Island.